Hi, my name is Karen O'Bannon, and today I'd like to talk to you about prayer. But first, let's have some fun. Watch this video. Hey there, everyone. I'm not sure how this happened, but we seem to all be trapped inside the mystifying maze. We need to find someone to help us get out. Oh, wait! I bet you can help! To escape from this maze, we need at least one person to unlock the five doors that stand between us and freedom. If you can't do it, we'll just be trapped inside this maze. Forever! No pressure, though. So, if everyone can please stand up, we'll get started. The rules are simple. We'll see a series of locked doors. At each one, you'll be given two actions to choose from. If you choose the correct action, the door will unlock, and you can stay standing. If you choose the wrong action, then please take a seat and cheer your teammates on. Everybody got it? Good. Let's head to the first door. All right. Looks like this door will be unlocked with either a fist bump or a high five. I'm not sure which, though. What do you think? If you think it's a fist bump, do an air fist bump. If you think it's a high five, do an air high five. Time's up. Looks like this was a fist bump lock. If you did a fist bump, come with me to the next door. If you did a high five, have a seat. This next door will be unlocked with either a salute or a karate chop. What do you think it is? If you think it's a salute, do your best salute. If you think it's a karate chop, do a karate chop and say, Hi-ya! Time's up! Looks like the correct action was the karate chop. If you did a salute, please take a seat. Don't worry though, we'll come back for you. This third door might be a little trickier. I think it will take jumping jacks or jogging in place to unlock it. What do you think? Make your choice now. Time's up! Looks like it was jogging in place. If you were jogging in place, please jog to the next door with me. We're almost out of here. I think to unlock this door, you either need to stretch your hands above your head as high as you can, or touch your toes. It's hard to tell though. Which do you think it is? Do the one you think will unlock the door now. Time's up! Looks like the correct action was hands above your head. If you touched your toes, please sit down. Don't worry, the rest of us are gonna get everybody out of here. This last door will be unlocked either by spinning in a circle or dancing as fast as you can. What do you think it could be? Do the one you think will help us escape now. Time's up! Good news! It looks like both of these actions opened the last door! Great job, everybody! We escaped from the mystifying maze! Well, did you make it out? If you didn't, no worries. We'll come back and get you. Now let's talk about prayer. Some people believe that prayer is a ritual that religious people like to practice. But for us Christians, it's the way we talk to God. We talk to God because we understand that He wants a personal relationship with each and every one of us. And communicating on a daily level is how we get it. The apostles understood that. That's why one of them asked Him to teach them how to pray. And he gave them this motto. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Now that seems like a lot of words, but in its simplest form, it's praise, repent, ask, and yield. That's praise, praise Him for the good things, for all that He's done, for all that He is. Repent, repent for all the wrong things that we've done. Ask, ask Him to sustain us for our daily bread. And yield, or listen, so that we can hear back from Him. That's P-R-A-Y. Pray. Get it? Now check this out. God's story. Prayer. So part of God's story is about prayer, and it goes like this. Prayer is what we call a conversation we have with God. That means even though God created the entire universe and has power over all things, He wants to have a relationship with us. He wants us to know Him. That's pretty amazing. We can talk to God anytime, anywhere, about anything. But let's look at four examples of different ways we can pray. One way to pray is to praise God. That's when we tell God what we love about Him. Like a guy named Jehoshaphat. He was king of God's family when some big time armies declared war on them. Jehoshaphat was terrified. So he talked to God about it. He said, God, you are the mighty ruler of all things. We don't know what to do, but we're looking to you for help. King Jehoshaphat believed God could help them. So as he went into battle, he sent people ahead of his army to praise God. They said, give thanks to the Lord. His faithful love endures forever. Yep, that means he thanked God before he won the war. And when God heard his praise, he caused those big armies to attack each other. Jehoshaphat didn't even have to fight. A second way to pray is to repent. See, we all mess up, which means we turn away from God. When we repent, we ask Him to forgive us and we turn back to Him. One time, another king named David made a big mistake. He took something that wasn't his. Then David tried to cover it up, which turned it into an even bigger mess. When David's good friend Nathan told him he disobeyed God, David repented. He said, have mercy on me, O God, because of your unfailing love. Mercy is when someone gets forgiveness they don't deserve. And guess what? God will always forgive us when we repent. Of course, anyone can pray to God, not just kings. One woman named Hannah reminds us of a third way we can pray. We can ask God for something. Now, Hannah really wanted to have a baby, and she told God that. But you know what was crazy about her prayer? Even though she really wanted a baby, she said, God, if you give me a son, then I will give him back to you. Kids, isn't that unusual? To ask for something you want, then give it back? Well, a year later, Hannah had a son, and she did exactly what she promised. She gave her son back to God by sending him to live with a priest named Eli and do God's work. And Samuel just so happens to be a great example of a fourth way we can pray. Like any good conversation, we shouldn't do all the talking. We should listen, too. That's because God is in control, and we've got to yield or give in to what He wants. We yield when we listen to what God says and obey Him, no matter what we want. One night, God called Samuel's name three times. When Samuel finally realized God wanted to talk to him, he said, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. Samuel stopped to listen, and God told him things. When Samuel obeyed what God told him, God kept talking to him. And when we pray, when we praise, when we repent, when we ask, and when we yield, we remember that he's the one in charge, and that we get to talk to him because we're loved by him. And that's some of what the Bible says about prayer. So in case you missed it, here's the quick version. Prayer is talking to God. Prayer is also listening to God. There are a lot of ways to pray. Jehoshaphat praised God. David repented. 
Hannah asked God for what she really, really wanted. Samuel listened. And they all wanted what God wanted more than what they wanted. Prayer reminds us that God is in control. He loves us and wants to be close to us. And that's a part of God's story. Now that we've talked about what prayer is, let's talk about what it is not. First, it's not a maze we have to go through, like that game we played earlier. There's no formula we have to comply with in order to get God to listen to our prayers. Two, it's not a request line, so you don't get to bring your Christmas list. God wants us to ask Him for the things we need. He says in the Bible that you have not because you ask amiss. That means we ask for our own selfish pleasures. God wants us to ask for his will. And three, prayer is not a bragging station. Jesus told a parable about two men who went to the temple to pray. One was a Pharisee, the other one was a publican. The Pharisee went into the temple and prayed a snobby prayer about how good he was and how he was so much better than everyone else. But the publican, he prayed a humble prayer. He was honest with God because he knew his life was a mess and he wanted to be forgiven. Well, guess what? God liked his prayer. The Pharisee, not so much. God listens to our words, but he hears our sincerity, and it's sincerity that builds relationships. So be honest with God. Build that relationship on trust, and open up your heart, and just pray. Lord, we thank you for loving us the way you do, and for being so amazing and so powerful, but still wanting to be our friend. We appreciate you so much. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, I'll see you next time.